Hello everyone, this is Susinder and in this video, I wanted to give a brief introduction to sniffer analysis. First of all, what is a sniffer? A Wi-Fi sniffer is a Wi-Fi device that is operating in promiscuous mode or monitor mode. In this mode, the device does not perform receive address matching checks and sends every received frame up the stack. Now, sniffers do not have to be associated to an access point or connected to the network and can be a passive observer. A sniffer reports all the contents of the MAC frame, but it does not report the Phi header contents. Only certain subfields of the Phi header are reported in a special header called radio tap header. And the contents inside this radio tap header really depends on the sniffer hardware and the sniffer software driver being used. Note that sniffers are like any other device, so they have received dynamic range limitations and cannot receive all the frames. For example, if the received power level of the Wi-Fi frame is below the receive sensitivity of the sniffer, those frames may not be received. Similarly, if the received power is more than the maximum input level of the sniffer device, then those frames may not be received. Also, the placement of the sniffer relative to the AP and client that you are interested in matters a lot. So if the sniffer is placed close to the access point, then it may receive all the frames from the access point reliably, but it may be missing several of the frames from the client, either because of insufficient SNR or the channel conditions may not be suitable for the sniffer. So it is advisable to place the sniffer between the AP and the client if you are interested in getting the frames from both sides. In addition, the five capabilities of the sniffer also determine which frames it can receive. For example, if the AP and client are capable of 160 megahertz bandwidth operation, whereas the sniffer is only operating in 80 megahertz bandwidth, then it will not be able to receive those frames. Also things like spatial stream and the file layer generation also matter. For example, a Wi-Fi 6 sniffer cannot receive Wi-Fi 7 data frames between a Wi-Fi 7 capable AP and client. Also, the location of the sniffer could be such that it is a hidden node with respect to some client or access points. So the sniffer may not receive frames transmitted by those specific clients or access points. So just because a sniffer is not able to see frames from a certain device, it doesn't mean the device is not present there. It may just mean that the sniffer is far away from that device or the sniffer's capabilities are not sufficient to decode those frames. So in this picture, we are showing a 4x4 four four access point and two 2x2 two two clients connected to the access point. Let's say we are interested in receiving all the frames from AP client 1 as well as client 2. So we can place the sniffer somewhere in the midpoint between all these three devices. Now it could be that client 1 is a hidden node to client 2. So when client 1 is transmitting a frame, client 2 may transmit at the same time causing a collision. So what happens when there is a collision? Will that show up in the sniffer trace? So as you can imagine, when a collision happens, it becomes very difficult for the sniffer to demodulate and decode the frames involved in the collision. So typically, all those collision frames do not show up in the sniffer. So it is hard to find out whether collisions are happening or the collision probability or frequency of collisions from a sniffer trace. Another practical challenge we might encounter is capturing data frames which are transmitted at a high modulation, especially 64 QAM or higher modulations. This is because the SNR requirements to receive these high modulations are much higher. So it may be possible that let's say AP is able to transmit two spatial stream MCS9 to client one and client one is also able to receive it. But when we try to capture it on the sniffer, the sniffer may have a hard time receiving it. Also worth noting is that different devices 
have different transmit power levels. For example, the AP's transmit power might be much higher than the client 1's transmit power. So we might see all the frames coming from the AP, but we may not see all the frames coming from client 1, especially if it's going at higher modulation. While the AP may not have an issue receiving it, perhaps because it has 4 chains, right? With 4 receive antennas, maybe the AP is able to receive it, but the sniffer may be limited to only two receive antennas and therefore it might have a, an SNR issue. So please remember these points when diagnosing issues using sniffer traces. Sniffers only give a partial view as to what is going on and we may not see all the frames there. So we need to have this in mind when analyzing any sniffer trace or making any conclusions based on a sniffer trace. This is particularly important when analyzing performance issues using sniffer traces. Despite these limitations that we discussed, sniffers are good enough to troubleshoot most connection related issues because the management frames are always sent at the basic rates which do not require a very high SNR to demodulate. So typically sniffers should not have trouble seeing the management frames. Of course, those that involve in a collision, we won't be able to see. So bear that in mind with respect to collisions. Another point I'd like to add is that the primary channel of the sniffer must align with the primary channel of the AP or client that you are interested in. If the primary channel does not align, then it will not be able to receive those frames. So to recap, primary channel is the channel where the access point is beaconing. So take note of that channel number and then configure it on the sniffer and also make sure you take note of the access points bandwidth and then configure the same on the sniffer if you are interested in capturing all the data frames. If you are interested in capturing only the management frames, then the bandwidth is not of relevance. Now let us review a sniffer trace example to understand these concepts better. Here is an example of a sniffer trace. I'm using the software Wireshark here. And this is the Wireshark version that I'm using. Now, when you open a sniffer trace, you'll notice several columns here by default. And it may look different on different machines. That's because the configurations may be different. But typically, some fields are common or by default. First, first column will be the number. Second column will be the timestamp. So this number is the number assigned by the Wireshark, okay? And this is not the sequence number of the frame, okay? Don't confuse it with sequence number. This is just the order in which the frames were recorded in the sniffer trace. The second column timestamp, this timestamp is in seconds unit. And this is the time at which the frame begins, okay? So it's the beginning time of the frame as seen by the sniffing device. And the very first frame is assigned a time of zero and everything else is with and the timestamp of every other frame is reported related to the first frame. Now typically in a sniffer trace you will see lot of frames which are irrelevant or frames that you are not interested in. So first thing you want to do is filter those frames that are of interest to you. For that you need to know the MAC address of the AP and the MAC address of the client that you are interested in. In case you don't have that information, at least you should try to have the SSID information. So you can go into this wireless double land traffic summary that will show you the list of all the SSIDs or BSSIDs that are part of this sniffer trace. And it will also show you a column like percentage of packets belonging to each of these different uh, BSSIDs. Let's just pick this one because this has the largest percentage of packets. And if you open up this, it shows the BSSID of that AP and it also shows various MAC addresses here. These are the MAC addresses of the clients that are talking to this particular access point. Okay. So, and also you can see the breakdown, like how much percentage of packets are there for each of the clients. So let's pick this client because this has the maximum uh, number of packets. And then you just right click it and then click apply as filter and say selected. So now it would have filled up this display filter text box here. So you have to give some field name equal to equal to whatever value that you're looking for. So in this case, it is filtering upon all the frames that have either the transmitter address or the receiver address equal to this specific client MAC address. Okay. So you can see all the frames from this client. So we can see here all the probe requests sent by the client 
the probe response as it received the association request going out from the client and the association response coming back from the ap right to this client so let's randomly open some frame right so let's say we open this frame so this is the frame field that tells you the timestamp and how many bytes are there in that frame and this is the radio tap header which tells you what is the signal strength of the received frame and what ppd type it is like what mcs it is what bandwidth it is whether ldpc is used or not and some important information like that now note that not all the fields in the file header will be present here these are basically copied from the file header and populated here by the sniffer driver now this is your mac header so under this IEEE 802.11 cost data, you see the MAC header contents. So here you see the type or subtype field, which tells you what type of frame it is. Now we could add this as a filter, for example. So we can say apply as filter and we can say and selected, meaning it will just add it as an and condition on top of the existing filter. So if you say and, you see that it put the ampersand ampersand, that means it's just anding multiple conditions so you can add how many ever conditions you want and then you can add them or you can or them so you don't need to remember all these field names okay we can see the mac header fields namely the type or subtype the transmitter address and the receiver address we can also see the sequence number and whether the frame was encrypted or not so we can see that from the flags inside the flags you see protected flag is set to one that means the data is encrypted so we cannot make any sense from the data because this would be encrypted and from the qos control field we can see the, what is the tid for this frame so this is a voice access category frame interesting this is actually a buffer status report frame from the client now let's say we want to add a field as one of the columns so that it is kind of easy to look at it so let's say I want to add the number of spatial streams as one of the columns in this uh, sniffer. So again, just randomly pick some frame, right? And then it will show up the frame uh, below, right? So you go into the radio tap header, inside this HC information. You can look for this number of space time streams. And then you right click this and click this apply as a column. Okay, so if once you click that, you will see the number of space time streams came as an additional column. So you can change which columns you want by just right clicking the column header and you can just select or unselect whichever columns of interest to you.